My name is Yvette Campbell and I'm the Institutional Advancement Director for the American Community School of Abu Dhabi. We're going to be showing you a series of videos to share with you how your donations support our school. I bet you didn't know we're a not-for-profit and that means that our tuition pays for the basics and that margin of excellence is actually supported by generous contributions. So today, we're here with Brad Flickinger, who's going to share with us the improvements we've made to the elementary school innovation and tech program. So if you don't know Brad Flickinger, he was part of the ACS team to reimagine our tech in the ACS elementary. He's got eight years as an elementary school tech teacher, five years as a middle school tech teacher, and two in high school. And I bet you didn't know he recently wrote a best-selling tech book on how to use badges in the classroom. We are so delighted that we have Brad Flickinger at our school, and our elementary school kids will be too. So Brad, tell us the purpose of the Elementary School Innovation Lab. So to understand the purpose behind the new Innovation Lab at ACS Elementary, we need to go backwards a little bit here, and that is as a team, we like using understanding by design, which is a concept that says start with where you want the student to finish and then work backwards from there okay so we want uh, we looked at a fifth grade student and said okay what does this fifth grader need to be successful moving on into middle school okay and then we worked all the way back to kindergarten from there and so we looked at all the different ideas and then for a foundation we looked at what was already being successfully done in the elementary school and how could we build upon that success use that strong foundation uh, we also were concerned about screen time, just like parents are. We don't want to see kids just plugged in with headphones looking at screens. We want them up and about, not just sitting down to a screen. And we want them touching things, building things, moving about and doing those type of things. And of course, once the uh, pandemic is over, we want them together collaborating, working and touching things and doing all that. But right now, we have also need to build it so that it can have social distancing, which we're taking into account. Okay, and then, so, so we wanted to really be mindful of that in the design of the new tech program for the elementary school. And, and then finally, we really wanted them to be innovators, not, and just see tech as a tool. It's a, it's a tool for innovation, and we need to learn tech skills, that's for sure. But really, we want to turn them into little innovators, okay? And we want to do that by giving them a space that inspires them. We've had such great success here in the middle school with building the backstage area where the students walk in, they're like, yeah, let me, let me into the studio. Let me start podcasting. Let me start recording something. Let me build a robot. It's all just here for them, and it inspires them to do more, okay? And then one little cherry on top of the purpose of building this new innovation lab is that of course, we wanted to try some new ideas because we're about to build a new campus. So let's, let's experiment a little bit and see what really works. So when we go into the new campus, we have these great new ideas that when the campus opens, we can have a great and innovative uh, center there. So we, we want to try a couple new things. Excellent. So tell me a little bit more about students as creators versus consumers. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when it turns them into creators, what we mean by that is that when the students come into the space or they start to work on a project, we want them to create a digital product or something that's at the end of it that they will then share with other students. Okay, so let's take, for example, coding. The younger kids use a little thing called Osmo uh, Obby, which teaches them block coding by actually using physical blocks. And it's a really innovative and great thing. And we've had this in the school before. We've had great success with it. And so we're going to build upon that. So the younger students are going to start with that. So see right now, they're creating. Now it, they're going to be creating like say a video game or something, but they're creating something rather than just sitting and playing something. Okay. And then that moves on. The coding then moves on to a program called Hopscotch on the iPads, where they actually start really coding in blocks more. And again, this goes back to that original thing we talked about, preparing them for when they go to middle school and high school, when they can actually start uh, hand coding things. And we want to just kind of pique their interest right now and get them uh, thinking more about it. Uh, and so that's one way we turn them into creators. Uh, also, let's take a look at robotics. Uh, the younger students will start off with these two great cute little robots called Dash and Dot where they'll learn how to program those and, and then they'll move on into Lego We Do as they get older in elementary school and that will allow them to really start creating things and, and programming things and the one leads into the other really beautifully. So again, this is what you expect to see when you come into the Innovation Lab are students creating things. They're up out of their chairs, they're creating things, they're doing things, they're moving about 
And yes, they will look at screens and they'll be programming onto screens, but that's only part of the larger picture of them being great innovators and creators. So why not just call it a tech lab? Yeah, I guess we could have just called it a tech lab. But we want to start teaching the students that, uh, and we won't stop calling it tech, of course, but that they just see tech as papers and pencils, tools, right? Okay, so you go to art class and you learn to do art because you have paints and brushes and clay and those type of things. The same we want here. So we want them to really, uh, you know, we don't call it brushes and paint class, we call it art class. So that's what we really went behind the idea of, well, let's call it like the innovation lab and let's teach students that in this new world we live in, being innovative is a great skill. And one of the tools that we can use to help us be innovative is technology. Okay, so uh, let's take, for example, the new animation labs that we're putting in. The younger students will use an app on an iPad called Toontastic. It's made by Google. It's a really rock solid, great animation app where they then create their own um, stories. So they, they choose sets, they choose characters, they can add their faces to their own characters, they can draw their own characters, draw their own sets, and they will learn, uh, just like uh, in the rest of their work in school, how to tell a good story. Okay, so now imagine how they can apply this back in the classroom when they can give a report on something. And that's a lot of this we want to connect back to the classroom in the things that the students do. Okay, so then uh, older students in animation, they move on to stop frame animation in our new little stop frame animation studio, Studio 2, I believe it's called in our new space. And that's where they will start to animate uh, Lego pieces, those type of things to tell a story again. So. Uh, paper cutouts, whatever it might be. But we believe this is a really solid skill for students to learn in elementary school when they really got that creativity, that curiosity. And we've had great success with this in the past. A lot of people um, have thought that students don't have the patience for stop frame animation, but they do. They will stick with it and they love the results in the end because they make things come alive. And what's not to love about that? So how does the Innovation Lab fit into the big picture of elementary school tech? So the Innovation Lab is just part of a bigger picture of the tech program at ACS Elementary, obviously. Okay, so uh, we're centering everything on a website, uh, mytechbadges.com. Uh, can you tell I'm a badge guy? I love this kind of stuff. But what it really means is that you have the Innovation Lab, you have what's being done in the classroom, and then you also have, we've added new, is what's going on at home. Okay, with remote learning, of course. So we have those programs where students can do one of three different areas. And once they go into that, they pick their grade level and then they pick their projects. Okay, so it really gives students a choice of what they want to learn. They will learn all of the skills eventually over the time, but it's a really interesting way that um, the Innovation Lab is just there to, to really give them skills that they can take back to the classroom and start to use to really show their learning. Okay, and that's what we really want them to do is be inspired by what they learn in the Innovation Lab to take it further in the classroom and to show uh, more things about what they're able to do. So why build a space that inspires? Yeah, the new space is amazing. Now, granted, it's only about 80% done. So just some of the trim's not up, some of the carpet's not in, but this will give you an idea. Okay, so what it means to really give a space that inspires is that students, um, when I was researching my book, I, I, I spent about four years trying to figure out motivation for students to do better with technology. And I ended up uh, finding out that it, it's the same with sports, okay? And, and, and I'm a real geek of a guy, so it really kind of hurt me like, oh, the answer is sports. But really, when students are motivated to really do better in sports, it's because they see um, the sporting area like what the professionals use. So they see a, a soccer pitch or a basketball court or what have you, and they see that is the same thing that they see on TV with their favorite teams and stuff. And it's just a different version of that at the school, but they make that connection. Okay, so we want the same thing with technology. When they see an animation lab, it's gonna look like an animation lab that you would find at Disney. A uh, podcasting studio has all the acoustic tile in it, has the microphones, the headphones, all those kind of things that says to their little minds, hey, wait, this is like the real thing, because it is, okay? And that's what we want in a, in a space. We want them to come in and just feel like anything's possible. Like, oh, give me that robot, I can build something really cool with it. Or let me into the studio and I can make a really cool video. That's what we're really talking about. 
And of course, now the space with uh, social distancing, we're having to alter it just slightly. What we had imagined were three and four students working in the, uh, in, uh, uh, the animation lab or the podcasting studio. Now it's just going to be one student at a time which is fine. We've just kind of altered the lesson plans, but we will be able to still do great things. Uh, they'll still do robotics, still do coding, still do podcasting, all those great things, but with social distancing. In fact, we can do more of it because how we've configured this, the new space. So it's going to work out great. How does this prepare them for middle school? Okay, admittedly, I'm a little biased when it comes to this. As the middle school tech teacher and innovation teacher, I want my students coming into sixth grade just ready to go. And so there's certain skills I want them to have. So let me talk about two. Uh, one is podcasting. Okay, so we started podcasting last year. We have a great podcasting studio here in the middle school. And we've got, I think, over 70 episodes now on the ACS Podcasting Network. And it can be found on iTunes, Spotify, um, a bunch of different things, Google Podcasts, all those things. You can just talk to your device and you can say, tell it to play ACS Podcasting Network and it will find us and it will start playing the, the most recent episode. Really great stuff. The students are doing great work. But if I can have them coming in a little more prepared for that, we can even do better work. Do you see where I'm going with this? So that's what I really want. So that's why we're going to bump some podcasting down to uh, elementary school as well as all the other things. But that's one of the reasons that they come just better prepared into middle school being able to do that and gives them a voice, right? They can podcast about projects in science class and English class, all those things, and they'll just be better prepared for that. Uh, the next thing is the micro studio. So we've built this great little micro studio over there. It's tiny. It has a little green screen, but it allows them to shoot a weekly show that's going to showcase all the great things that are going on in elementary school. And they can be little hosts and they can have things. We've got a puppet for them and we've got a plant that's going to ask questions. We've got a great little show planned. It's all done retro style and 8-bit graphics and it'll resemble like an old Nintendo video game. And the kids are going to have a lot of fun with that. But it gets them ready so when they come up into middle school, we do a a larger show, a weekly show here on YouTube, that can really do great things. And so they'll just be ready for that because again, students, this, these are new life skills that students need to be able to get their voice out there and explain their learning to other people and how they learn that. And that's why, it's one of the great reasons why uh, we want this all to happen. So I'm a little biased, but that's what it all is. That was fantastic. Thank you and your team for all that you've done to make our elementary school tech program amazing. And we're super excited about the Innovation Lab. And all of this is possible because of generous contributions to our Excellence Fund, which supports our strategic planning goals as a school to empower students to shape the future. Personalizing learning and delivering excellence are key components of our strategic plan. We want to offer highly engaging, innovative, and flexible core curriculum and establish structures and resources to challenge uniquely motivated and talented students. And of course, implement innovative curriculum that promotes creativity and self-expression. And we couldn't do this without you. So on behalf of our entire ACS community, our board, and our leadership, thank you.